Cheers for joining us, Martin. First of all, the, the January transfer window slammed shut on Monday evening. Was it a positive one for yourself on the whole? Yeah, I feel so. Uh, we, we, you know, we set out to... It was At the start, it was to fetch three players in, if I'm totally honest. Uh, the remit changed on that uh, when Lee Angle uh, was was injured uh, last week, so we ended up getting four. Yeah, but yeah, p- people, go, people going out, some people going out, and, and four new ones coming in. Now, when you sign players in the January market, or any time you sign players, you want them to improve uh, and help the squad. Uh, so I think the four that have come in will improve us and will help us. And uh, and uh, I think if anyone that was at the game at Crawley last night it would look at it, it or it wouldn't be at the game, would they? Obviously, only us was at the game. But people who watched the game at Crawley last night would have seen that you know all four of the players that we brought in that was on show last night uh, certainly got good potential for us to move forward with. Absolutely. And do you, do you feel as though January is an important time to do business in football? You look at the signings from last year with Danny Johnson and Vigor and Cissé and now the Ford this season. Do you see it as an important time? This? I think any windows is important. Uh, I mean, a lot of time you hear the big clubs talking about that January is not, the, not a good window to work in. But if you need to, if you need to fetch players in uh, to improve you, uh, then, it, then, then I think every window's the same. And obviously, with the summer window, you get a longer period to think about it, and and it ain't all rushed like people would say within within January. But for us as a club, we never we never rush. We've always we're ongoing with our recruitment. We're ongoing with our, our scouting. So we've always got a nucleus of names that we've looked at over the period. So we're always ready to go when when a position comes available, or we feel that there's a weakness within a position. We can always go out and improve ourselves. So I think we do the the groundwork, and if the groundwork's done, then. But January is, you know, last, you know, obviously last January was a very good window for us, and if this one could be as half as good as the last period, then then we'll be we'll be very happy people. And if we look a bit more in depth in this January's window, Martin, um, we'll look at each signing individually and if you could just kind of tell us the strengths and why they were bought to the club really and the first one of the window was Dan Kemp signing on a permanent deal from West Ham he was playing the first half of the season at Blackpool what do you feel that he brings to the squad yeah I just think with Dan we've we've watched him uh, for about two years now and we nearly brought him in last summer Uh, there's been a few occasions where we've nearly took Dan in and and, uh, Ross just felt he needed a a different emphasis out wide uh, quick creativity uh, and we think Dan brings that, but he's also what I liked about it when I went and watched him was the he also had the, you know aggression when he lost the ball. You know he, he's only he's only small, uh, but he he don't mind getting stuck in. Don't mind doing the dirty work. And in League Two, you're going to need to do that. But he has got some good qualities. I think that he will think bring both goal creation and goal scoring is the two things that he's going to be judged on. But I also think he's he's one that will dig in and, and, and help us out defensively. And that old adage of defending from the front, he will certainly improve us in that department. And looking at the second signing of the January window, it was Nick Freeman on loan from Championship side Wickham. Um, that was a real signing of intent for you, was it not? Yeah, I mean, we... We had Nick on our list, uh, but we, we, we felt that uh, first inquiries that he, that he probably would end up with someone better than, than ourselves, if I'm honest with you. He'd, like, he'd played at Wickham and, and had two promotions. They was in the championship. And when we when I first spoke to his, uh, his agent, it was a tentative inquiry to say that we would be interested. Uh, the reply we got back was, he's looking for League One, which I, is, is what I expected. Uh, but then, to be fair, Ross spoke to him. Uh, and and, and so did a good selling job on the club and what we're about and when we come away from that conversation we thought we had a chance and 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 uh yeah it's 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 proven to be we were delighted when we got him uh, as i say he was he was on our list but one that we thought might have been out of our grasp but it's proved to be uh there for us his you know his energy's immense and again Goal creation and goal scoring is two parts that he brings to us. But also, again, I say the, the energy that he fetches into the building. What I like, when I come to the training ground, you know, you've know, got four new players that come in. We just talked about two of them. But the old training ground seems to have gone up. You know, the, the, the players that have come in, both on the training pitch, in and around the, the building, around the weights room, they do things properly. And... and I'm not saying our players wasn't, but it always 
I think you always expect people into improving. I think these four will, uh, but but Nick is, uh, yeah, he's he's one we didn't think we was going to get. As I said before, he was above us, but so I was delighted when we got when we got him and he, and he chose to come from us, come to us. And it was the defence that you then went on to improve with the third signing of um, of the window in Adam Thompson. He was signed on a permanent from Rotherham until the summer of twenty two, and that's a. Uh, Feels as though it might be more of a long term vision signing as well, Mike. Yeah, I mean Adam, uh, a bit like Nick, really. He's, he was on, he was on that list, you know. And and but he again had, had, had a promotion with Berry, a uh, promotion in Rotherham his last two seasons. Uh, I knew Adam. Uh, I don't say personally, but I know Adam lives in Boxball. I live in Boxball, and he went to the same school as as Sam and Charlotte, my children. So I knew of him. Uh, I'd watched him and, and watched his career develop uh, and again he when he, when we first talked to Adam he was talking about he, he, he's looking for League One which again we accept because that, I think his CV is probably a League One CV but again we got uh, Ross had, had a chat with him when I think people were surprised by how well these football clubs run and how good our training facilities are how we do things Properly, I'm not saying I would find. I think you'd find it diff, more difficult to find a better run League Two club in in League Two. So I think we can if we can ever get them through the door, we start talking to them. Nine times out of ten, we get them to sign because uh, we, we're showing them what we're about. And as I say, we're we we believe we're a, a, an excellent run League Two club. And and we talked about the possibility of pushing on from where we were. You know, the chances of going back up to League One, the, the remit the ball always put me was, can we have League One ready players if you can when you're in League Two? That's not always easy to do. It's easy to say. But I feel with the, the four that we've brought in, that that remit has been met. Great. And finally, it was Tristan Abraham's return in on loan from Newport County. You said at the beginning of this interview that you only plan to make three and I'm guessing Tristan was the one that was more of an emergency sign. Yeah, it was, it was uh, when Lee went down last week. Uh, we we was pushed into thinking that we needed a forward, especially we didn't know of Danny Johnson's recovery, how long he was going to be. So we felt we needed to fo- fetch a forward in, and 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 again, I was surprised that it, Tristan was uh, pushed to us really. Uh, you know, by an agent uh, spoke to me, said, "I know, like you sort of put it out there, we need a forward," and and then, and then Tristan's name come up, and it, you know, you look at it, you think. I don't really know him. He was here eighteen. He was eighteen when he left. When I walked into the building, he was as good as sold. If I'm honest with you, to Norwich, uh, he went away, come back on loan, and when he came back on loan, it didn't really work. And I, it was it, it was more like he had been sold to Norwich, but told he had to come back to Leighton Orient. So it, it never worked. Steve, Steve never. Steve Davis, who was the manager at the time, didn't really work. It didn't really work for him. So we just let Tristan go back. And but. In the two games, uh, Newport, he's played against us twice for Newport and I've always thought he's given us trouble. I always thought he was a good player uh, when he was here for the small amount of time that he did play for us, but knowing that I was never going to be able to keep him. So when the opportunity came, and I, this one was a bit of a gut one for me, if I'm honest with you. Me and Ross talked about it and I said, I don't know what it is, but I just get a feel that, that, that this is right. I think he's got unfinished business here. You know, he went away at 18, he went to Norwich, it never really happened. He went on loan to Exeter, he, he's been at Newport uh, and done, you know, he's done done well at both clubs. But if you, when Tristan walked out here as an 18 year old, he would have thought that his career would have went from Norwich upwards and it's gone from Norwich back to where he was. So I do feel there's some unfinished business here. And one thing for me with Tristan, whenever I, when, I wouldn't have liked to play against him. When I watched, um, and, and me and Ross watched him, and I watched him live, I, you would never want to play him because he's because he's all action. He's got plenty of energy. He's got pace that we, you know, more pace than probably any of our forwards have got. If I'm honest with you, so that was a, a, a big thing with it. You know, he's got to add goal scoring to his repertoire. He, he, he has got a goal scoring record, but not as re- not as good as it should be. But as I say, this part of this was was. Sometimes in life you get some. Sometimes you go back somewhere. Oh, you know, I sort of looked at my own career. I know this sounds stupid, but I went to as a twenty-year-old. I went to Swindon Town. I, I lasted ninety-three days there with with a letter manager called Lou Macari. And when I went back five years later, I had a point to prove, and it ended up ended up with me playing in the in the Premier League. So 
I just think that sometimes people don't see that, that when I was 20, when I went there, was I different when I was 25? Of course I was. And when Tristan left there as an 18 year old, is he coming back as a 22? I think he left there as a boy and come back as a man. And uh, I think he will be a, a, a big addition. And the good news is Danny Johnson uh, has got an outside chance of being involved this weekend. And if it ain't this weekend, he's not very far away from either Carlisle or the game after Carlisle. So that's good news as well to have Trish. But then again, we lost Ross Satoria last night with an hamstring. So, you know, it was rough with a smooth, but uh, I'm glad we did fetch Trish in and I'm glad we did go and get someone because we've got two centre forwards that are sitting outside. They're going to be quite a long time in terms of Ross Satoria and, and, and the angle. Fantastic. Well, that's everything in regards to into the signings in January, but you, we still feel as though there's a lot of business to be done between now and the end of the season. A, few, a fair few players out of contract. Can you give any updates on, on any of the situations there? Yeah, we've got... Uh, well, we had 20. I think it's a bit less now uh, that are out of contract. We've only got six players that have got a contract for next season in the squad. You know, there's only six. So the be on end is that we have got 20 players that, that, that are either going to be kept or let go. Simple. And, and but there is players that we're in talks with as we speak. Uh, there's some some difficulty within it in terms of the new rules, in terms of the uh, wage capping, uh, and the wage capping rules are if you sign players on again during the season pre there uh, before their contract is finished, it goes against you, and it's going to prove some sort of difficulty. So we won't be able to get as many through as we want right now but like anything we will uh there's it's as simple as this there's 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 green players there's orange players and there's red players now we do the green list the red or the orange list and the red list and we do it independently like myself ross the bold you know the, the other staff but the be on end of it is sometimes that a player that's on a, a, a green list sitting here today, you may, when next time we talk about going to the orange list, but you know we know who the green ones are and they know the ones we'd like to get tied up and, and, and I ain't got to name names because so I wouldn't do that. But I think people uh, who are clever and people that understand know that we, never, we, we try never to let good players go from here. So you can imagine the green players. The orange players are they still where the undecided are. are they are they uh, going to do well enough between now and the end of the season to to become a green player, or are they going to have a bit of a bad time where they can be a red player? And we've got red players that are in the red zone who I feel that if the national league continues, which I hope it does, uh, the loan market is still open to them to 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 come and approach us about some of our players, as I feel some of our players uh, need some football uh, and and and. They need to be doing some football for their career. So I think everybody's aware uh, roughly where they are on the list. I've, I, there's certainly, uh, I would say that I've spoke to 90% of the people who are in the green, orange and red, and so has Ross. You know, Ross speaks to them in terms of wanting them as footballers and what he wants to, and how he wants to build his squad. I talk to them in terms of Ross wants to keep you I will speak to your agent and then do all the negotiations from then onwards. So there's a lot of things to go uh, into place. One is, let's look at the football side of it. Two, we've got to get into the wage capping. You know, we're going to be about... Next year, I would say about half a million pound down from the spender this year. And people have got to understand that. You know, that's how the wage capping works. The spend this year is 2.3 million. Uh, next year's spend is, is deemed to be about 1.8, which is 1.5 that's wage capping. You can have as many under 21s as you want, and that probably about 300 grand spent on under 21. So I know there's good players, and I know we'd all like to keep them, but in the end, some of that would be determined of whether I can fit them into a budget that's half a million pounds to what we used to be. But we will get it done. We will. We we will. Uh, we will talk to players that we want to keep and we have talked to players that we want to keep so everyone's in, in the loop but there's still there's still a lot of uh, still a lot of walk to go under the bridge you know the PFA are challenging I believe the wage capping so they're saying that, that they ain't right for their members because there's 
the simple fact is there's going to be less footballers employed because of the wage capping. It's, you know, it's simply simple economics. There, there, there will be less footballers that will be employed because of the wage capping. So the PFA are making a stance to say, is the, is the wage capping legal? So we we believe it is. We're working off a wage capping this year. I can only work onto what I'm told to do, and that's that the, the wage capping will be in place. So I have to I have to uh, do the budget and do the players to fit into that budget off of them figures. But yeah, it's it's interesting times ahead. I love it. I love doing it. It's it's you know everybody's got the same problems. Uh, some people have got bigger problems than us, you know, the people like the sulfurs of this world, are, you know, they've got to get down to the same budget that I'm going to be spending and some up, and also some other clubs is the same. So it's going to be interesting times there, but people, you know, they, they, they probably don't want to hear about wage capping because it means that your club is probably, well, ain't probably, your club will be spending less than it's spent previously because that's all it can spend. So... Yeah, interesting times. We've not worked with a wage capping before. This is the first year, and it's only a loose wage cap this year. Next year, it'll be a full wage cap, and and it's it's going to be. I think it's going to be a skilled job to make sure you get it right. Well, best of luck, Martin. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much.